curious what we're gonna encounter. Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob and I are both skiing on the Vocal Deacon 84 right now. Um, and I like these kind of shorter review videos. They feel like refreshers. Yeah, because this thing's been around for a few years now. So yep. like, it's always nice to get back on and we kind of put it on the back burner, but totally I mean, no reason for that. Right, well, little insight. Bob and I walk by the Deacon 84 every day on our way to our office. Just happens to be its location in our warehouse. And sometimes just we like notice skis like that where we're kind of like, oh, we haven't skied that in a while. Right. And it's a great ski. And it feels like one of those things that like you could kind of forget about. Right. So Deacon 84, it's the widest ski in the Deacon line. I suppose it shares that spot with the Deacon V-Works technically. Right. But kind of cool how big of a range there is in performance and application for skis that start with Deacon. Totally, from rental package all the way up to high-end V-Works and race-like construction. Right, like Deacon 72 Master yeah, or like Deacon 7.2 yeah. and then this thing. So that's always kind of interesting to me. Um, and then Bob, you got first run there. Yep. What do you think? I mean, what do we have? Like half inch of snow on top of pretty nice groomers. It's like, like perfect Deacon perfect 84. Deacon 84, you know, conditions yeah. and... Uh, yeah, I mean, tip to tail, hold an edge throughout. You can really feel that metal frame being super smooth and a lot of energy out of the tail. Just a great, great all-mountain ski for those that spend more time on groomers. Yeah, I feel like we used to refer to this ski as like the kitchen sink ski. Yeah. Where Vocal, it seemed like they just took every technology they have and put it into this ski, which is fine by me. Sure. Because I think the results are great. Um, so... I suppose it's my turn now, right? Yeah, I think you're going to have a blast. So we'll give it another run. I'll have Bob point the camera at me. And then we'll, uh, we'll check in after this next run here. Sounds good. Back for run two. Jeff, what'd you think? That is sweet. Yeah. I thought you really started to light it up here kind of in the lower angle shorter turns. Uh, one of the things we didn't talk about was 3D radius, which we're both fans of. What'd you think there? Well, I really felt it. It's funny that you bring that up because I really felt it there. Like this, this pitch right here kind of like progressively flattens out. Yeah. And it did feel like my turns got bigger and bigger because it's sort of that like gas pedaling effect and we've talked about that before like the amount that you're like kind of pressuring the ski yeah that's when you get to that shorter radius arc so it's such a cool like dynamic carving experience because it's so easy to make a bunch of different radius turns totally i think it's, it's got to be like the highlight of this ski but i couldn't help but think about it on the way down what a vocal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. Like, I mean that in the most positive way yeah. possible, but like vocal to me is synonymous with technical skiing and precision and like very clean turns. And I just, I just couldn't help but think about that as I was coming down. Like this, this has all the characteristics that I associate with vocal as a brand. Someone had mentioned when we did our Super Shape Rally review that it was like a great ski instructor ski. And I feel the same way about this thing I a lot like for those reasons you just said. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think it would be reasonable to at least present an argument that this might be a better ski instructor ski. Yep. Because it's a little wider and it kind of allows for, I don't know, that, that rally is that super shape rally is pretty locked in yeah you know you can release the tail and get it to skid around and stuff like that but i feel like these do that easier in fact i was going to ask you to make some short skidded turns this run ah that's my specialty short skidded turns i love them <laughs> well i feel like that's the other the other side of the story yeah. with 3d radius is when you have those longer 
kind of straighter cuts in the tips and tails, it's going to let you wiggle around, right. wiggle around a little more easily, at least in theory. Yeah, totally. So let's do that. All right. Then we should probably go up the big lift. Shorts get a turn. It's coming up. I think we can uh, wrap up with some closing thoughts on these Deacon 84s. Bob, how did the short turns go? The, you know, they're stiff. Right, you know, like it is a stiff ski. You have yep. to remember that this is a stiff, high performance ski. And, you know, a few times you can definitely feel the ski kind of put you back a little bit. Yep, totally. So if you want to make those short swing turns, you're like, you got to be on it. You yep. got to be pressure in the front of your boot and you got to turn hard. Yep. Um, but yeah, when you do, you're rewarded with just phenomenal energy. So, you know, it's it's worth the effort to get to get it to perform. Sure, it looked pretty like rhythmic and trustworthy. Oh, for sure. I mean, these, I mean, these are as solid and stable as they get at almost any speed. I think we both got a chance to open them up beyond that and feel how truly stable they are. Yeah, no issues there. I would say there's not like limitless rip. Okay. But it's pretty close to limitless. Yeah. Um, and it could have easily been skier error too. It was fun kind of putting them to the nosedive test just yeah. now. <laughs> um, and that was that was a challenging test today because the, the visibility is about as flat light as you're ever going to see and you're kind of skiing through the cloud. So it's tough to pick up like both variations in the snow surface and also like changes in conditions. Yeah. Like when it was turning to ice or if I was going to hit like a firm chunk or something. So that was a little bit unnerving and there were a couple moments where the ski slipped out just a little bit but again that could have just been my fault because I wasn't super confident with where I was going. I mean it's always hard going from softer snow to harder snow and that's kind of right. what we're dealing with these days is that there's spots of really really frozen man-made snow right in between kind of the softer stuff that's fallen recently so right you know don't beat yourself up you know it's no it's, it's challenging just, conditions it's just challenging and yeah. I, I would say there are other skis that make it a little easier yeah similar to how you were describing the short turns like when i was coming down the s turns on nosedive i like couldn't see at all right and i was kind of thinking to myself like Oh, well, this would be a lot easier on like a Revolt 104. Sure. Because you just let just the slide. ski like drift and slide down the whole thing where this kept wanting to do something because yep. the ski is so reactive and so precise. But boy, they, they sure are rewarding just arcing turns on groomers. And I think that's what most people are going to be doing with these things. Yeah, totally. You know, that and just that slight all mountain versatility, you know, right. certainly wide enough to handle softer snow and you know moguls and stuff like that you know no issues there totally so that was fun yeah as always let us know if you have any questions about deacon 84s um you know it's not like uh it's not like we're looking at next year's ski or anything so maybe yeah. not as exciting as some but I, it's a great ski and it, it still exists and i don't want people to forget about it I no suppose. i mean it should be on a lot of people's lists that are looking for mid 80s totally. all mountain carver love that mid 80 realm yep there's a lot of great skis in there so yeah, let us know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.